Big Things Come in Small Packages, a short story by Eleonora E. Tate, Part 2. Keeping an eye on the horizon, Tucker went on pulling in those waves until a huge one arched up behind his back and crashed down on him. Tucker disappeared. Wipeout. No big deal for Tucker, though. He popped right up in the water and grabbed his board, which was tied to his ankle. He was all right. But the man on the raft wasn't. He thrashed around in the water, screaming that he couldn't swim. As that big black cloud spread across the sky toward them, the wind and waves grew rougher. Wanting to help the man, but concerned about his own safety, Tucker hesitated, then straddled his surfboard and, using his hands for oars, paddled toward the raft. He'd have time to get the guy's raft back to him and then head in. But as Tucker passed, the man lunged at the surfboard, knocking Tucker off. And then this guy grabbed hold of Tucker. Wrapped up in that big bear's arms and legs, with the sea getting choppier, Tucker said he knew he was about to die. He began to pray. But something lifted Tucker up through the water and onto his surfboard, where he was able to catch his breath. That's when he saw his friend Richard in the water, too. Have mercy! Richard was hauling that raft toward the man. With two big heaves, Richard snatched that guy straight up out of the water and onto the raft. Richard yelled, Let's push it and pull it, tugboat! Push and pull it in! Somehow, Tucker and Richard pushed and pulled that raft, with the guy glued to it, close enough to shore that the man was able to wade in the rest of the way. Four or five people splashed into the water and helped them onto the beach and into the pier house. One of the helpers was a reporter on vacation. As soon as everybody was inside the pier house, the rain poured down. An arrow of lightning whizzed across the pier into the water and lit up the whole ocean. That's when Tucker said he got scared, seeing that lightning. He'd have been fried alive, you know. The guy Tucker rescued was named Nibbles. Mr. Nibbles was so grateful that he gave Tucker a hundred dollars right on the spot. The reporter interviewed everybody and took pictures of Tucker, Nibbles, and Tucker's dad, who almost had a heart attack when he heard what happened. When the reporter asked how such a small boy was able to rescue a big grown man, Tucker said, "'Cause I'm a tugboat, like Richard said. We pulled the big ones in.' But when Tucker turned around to point out Richard, he couldn't find him. The reporter's story about Tucker's rescue was in the local paper, then got picked up by the Associated Press and went all over the world. CBS TV even flew him and his folks to New York to be on its morning show. Afterwards, back home in Moorhead City, strangers stopped Tucker on the street, in stores, even came to his home. They wanted to see the little tugboat that hauled in that big man and get his autograph. Businesses up and down Arendelle Street put up Welcome Home Tugboat posters in their windows. And there was a parade. Tucker was a hero. He and the mayor rode on the back of a big old white Cadillac convertible and waved at everybody. I was so proud that I almost forgot and hollered out, Way to go, Tootsie Roll! But I caught myself in time. Everybody, even local folks, called Tucker Tugboat after that, including us kids. We'd never seen a real live hero close up before, especially one our age. It wasn't cool anymore to tease him with those other names. Funny how things can turn right around, isn't it? And you know what? Tucker grew to be six feet five. He played on the North Carolina Central University Eagles basketball team, joined the U.S. Coast Guard, and lives in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, on the Outer Banks. But there's something Tucker never figured out. When he first told people that Richard was the real hero, nobody believed him. Apparently, nobody but Tucker had seen Richard, not even Mr. Nibbles. There's more. When Tucker went into the pier gift shop to spend some of his rescue money, he picked up a book about the Coast Guard. He was thumbing through it when he stopped at an old-timey picture of some black men wearing jackets like Richard's. They were standing in front of a building on the outer banks. Below it was a picture of, yes, Richard. Mustache, beard, jacket, everything. 
Tucker read, History of the Pea Island Life Saving Service. Captain Richard Etheridge was keeper of the Pea Island Life Saving Service, a forerunner of part of what is now the U.S. Coast Guard. This unique, all African American, courageous life saving crew and those who followed saved hundreds of shipwrecked passengers' lives by plunging into the stormy seas and bringing their charges back to safety. Tucker said he shot out of that gift shop toward the restaurant to show his dad the book to prove his case, but what he read next made him stop. Captain Etheridge, born in 1844 on Roanoke Island in North Carolina, died in 1900. Tucker said he read that date 15 or 20 times before it started to sink in. 1900? Richard Etheridge had been dead for almost 100 years. How was it possible a dead man helped him save that guy? Unless Richard was a ghost. He'd been talking to and swimming with... a ghost? You can believe Tucker hit up the library that very next day and searched for as much information as he could find on Richard Etheridge. There wasn't much, but what he read was that Richard Etheridge was all those great things he had read about and that he still died in 1900. A few years later, when Tucker's folks visited the North Carolina Aquarium on Roanoke Island, Tucker found Richard Etheridge's grave and monument. Etheridge's headstone was marked 1844 to 1900. That's when Tucker stopped talking about Richard being involved in the rescue, unless somebody asked. So now, if you run into Tucker Tugboat Willis, ask him about the rescue and he'll tell you. Then, real carefully, ask if he ever met Richard Etheridge. He'll tell you yes, he did, and what he learned. What he learned was that it pays to be polite to everybody you meet, like Tucker was to a man named Richard. You never know when that person might help you. And every time Tucker tells me the story, he tells it to me the same way I told it to you. Seeing how Tucker turned out proves that some mighty things that help folks out in some mighty big ways can come in some mighty small packages. It also proves that good things come to those who wait, like I did. I know, because I'm Mrs. Lashana Mae Willis, Tugboat's wife. There really was a man named Richard Etheridge, a professional fisherman who was born in 1844 on Roanoke Island off North Carolina. A member of the 36th U.S. Colored Troops of the Union Army, he fought at the Battle of New Market Heights in Virginia during the Civil War. And in 1880, Etheridge was hired as the keeper of the Pea Island Life Saving Station on the Barrier Islands, the Outer Banks, of North Carolina. The station continued to set a high standard of performance with its all-black personnel until 1947, when the Coast Guard closed down the facilities. No one made any formal recognition of the Pea Island Surfmen's Daring Sea Rescues until 1996. In March of that year, Etheridge and his men were finally acknowledged posthumously in formal ceremonies in Washington, D.C., with a gold life-saving medal from the United States Coast Guard. Etheridge and his wife and daughter are buried on the grounds of the North Carolina Aquarium in Monteo, which maintains an exhibit on these brave men.